Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Play Underrail, an RPG turn-based game in the style of Fallout 1. This game is absolutely amazing, it has it all, it has monsters, mutants, guys in power armor, normal guys with guns and hammers and knives and tunnel rats and robots and everything. It is post-apocalyptic, of course, why not, as you can see in the picture, and there is stuff to craft, psych stuff to do, um, to sneak, to lockpick, to hack everything. This game is absolutely amazing and that is one of the reasons I want to bring it to you. But with that being said, what is the setting? Well, we're doing um, a pure melee fist build. So we're making a key adept of those who have played uh, Shadow Run. Those don't, that is basically a monk with psychic abilities who boosts his fist attacks with his psyche. And I hope that is effective enough to do this in the highest possible difficulty level. Yes, we're doing this in the highest possible difficulty level. However, there is the possibility that this is not working out as I hope. In that case, and if you ask for it, I can do another playthrough just with a normal man with a gun. Small machine guns, if possible. With that being said, let's go right into the character creation. Of course, we're playing dominating. That means the enemies will be... Uh, stronger, tougher, better trained and places where there are normally only, for example, small rats, there might now be even guys with guns. We're doing classic experience, that does not mean we don't get the oddity bonuses for finding special items and places, we're just getting also experience for doing killing stuff. Now when it comes to our abilities, there's one thing you have to consider. There are feats and feats have prequises. So there are certain feats, for example, that we need that need a strength of 7. So we have to put our strength on 7. We're getting every 4 levels, we get 1 point to give to our attributes, but that is a long shot. So we'll need to get that right from the start. Um, dexterity has to be 8 because we are uh, melee fighters with our fists. We have to reduce other stats as well. And we're putting our agility to 8 as well because we'll need for certain skills or for certain feats the agility of 8 as well. Constitution is very important but we can only um, have 5. Perception. You ask Boris, you're making not a ranged fighter, why put points in perception or not take points from perception? Because perception is needed to find hidden object, objects and passages. And 5 is not even enough to find anything. You need 7, 8, 9, 10 to find the really important and good stuff. So I have no points to give there. So what can I do? There is a feat called snooping. I know, feats are rare and we should keep our feats for other stuff, but that is really important in my eyes, because how can I show you the flavor and the size of the game if I'm not getting to all the important parts of the game? And in order to get the important parts of the game, I need snooping, that's how it is. Yes, it will hinder our combat uh, performance, but that's how it is. We need a name, and of course the name is always the same. Um, we need a face. Uh, no, no, we're not workers. We're more like, well, some, is there something monkish here? Oh, yes, we'll take that. What well, beautiful, beautiful. Um, I know what you mean. If we're fighting with our fists, we need more strength. Yes, but that is all we can afford at this point. You will see a lot of playthroughs with sledgehammers because sledgehammers are absolutely amazing in this game. If you want to have a build that is a real killer in close combat, go for the sledgehammers. There is a ton of feats for that and there's a lot of good builds with the sledgehammer and that is absolutely amazing. So, with the skills, we're ignoring all other skills in combat and go just for melee. Of course, we're getting our dodge and evasion as high as possible because we're going to be really, really metric style, hopefully. And there you see the first special point about, point about this game, you're getting synergy effects. They're skills that give you a bonus to another skill. Isn't that amazing? It is. We're going for stealth. We're going for hacking. We're going for lockpicking. We're not going for pickpocketing. Oh boy, why not? Because uh, we're not thieves. So you can see that we only have a hacking skill of three in the end because of our low intelligence, but that's how it is. And of the C abilities, you see that you get plus 10% to your skill from the other two schools. So we go for psych uh, psychokinesis um, to get our fists powered up. But... Actually, we should increase the other twos as well, because then we'll get 10% bonus to our Psychokinesis. 
but we're not because we don't have the points to spare, sadly. With the feats, now there is a feat that works very good, very good for us, not so good for the others. Expertise, why? Let me explain. This gives you a bonus to your attack damage, each attack damage, depending on your level. So, for example, if you're using a sniper rifle and you're, le doing, uh, you're level 1, you're doing 20 points for the sniper rifle and 1 damage uh, for your level with this feed. And you only have one attack around because a, a sniper rifle takes up a lot of, uh, of action points on, the, on your combat turn. However, if you're using fist attacks, you're striking 5 times a turn. And that means you're doing 5 extra damage in level 1. And it's 10 to... 10 extra damage in level 2 and it's 15 extra damage in level 3. You get my point? Very cool. Yes, I want to have nimble. Yes, I want to have conditioning. Um, well, sounds more like something for the hair, but who cares about that? We take expertise. Um, so, and we're ready to go. That's the character. If you've got any questions to that, just ask. If you want to see me doing the uh, very sophisticated gun build, just ask and I'll do the recording for that as well. With that being said, we'll jump right into it. So we'll skip the intro. If you want to see the intro, there are a lot of Let's Plays where you can see the entire intro. It's just that we're new in this underground bunker and we just passed the tests and we're ready to go. You will learn or see everything about the combat Let's Play a thousand times over. We skip the tutorial. We have to go back to this guy to get our gun back anyway, because he's got our gun. Uh, we don't need because we're fighting with fists, but you get my point. Now, this is us. This is our um, play view screen. So, we're focused at this point because that as long as we not move, we were getting bonuses to our abilities. We have 60 health. This will drop if we learn Psy abilities. Please be aware of the fact that if you decide to be a Psyker, like we are, we lose 25% of our health points. Oh boy, that's a lot. Um, down here you see our, um, at the moment, the things we have into our quick list. We have our stats, that's just what we did. We have our combat stats, there you can see how well your defenses are, what your de resistance is to the different damage types and all that. Our offensive, how much damage we do and all that. Critical chance, very, very cool. There is everything shown, nothing hidden. I find that very imp uh, important in the game. Our inventory, we are uh, robbed. Uh, crafting. We have no crafting skills, so we cannot craft anything, sadly. Uh, notes. We have to go to Consular Tenor. We'll do that. Oddities are the items that you can find in the world that are special, that give you extra XP. Of course, the help. And you are in a controlled s zone. That means you cannot drop everyone here without um, following things that happen. And uh, you cannot place traps. And you have to be careful here not to be hostile. With that being said, let's rob, first of all, our place dry. We need everything that is not nailed to the desk. And everything that is nailed to the desk will break loose. Extra gold. That's excellent. Give me a second. So, I'm back. Sorry. Being a father, husband, house owner and worker is a job where you have to do something all the time. So, we're looking our own place dry. Trying to find some stuff. That is Hypno Bandages, very good for healing, excellent. And armor! Red Hound Leather Armor, our persuasion is decreased by three. Oh boy, we don't have any persuasion, now isn't that an oddity. Armor penalty 10%, that is not good. Mechanical resistance three, that means every mechanical damage will take, three damage will be subtracted. Now, on this level there is not a lot we can do because all the doors here are locked. And the doors that are not locked are just the, well, toilets, basically. As you can see, hacking 50, we're far away from that. And we don't have any lock picks or hacking equipment. So nothing we can do here, sadly. So let's go and find that tenor guy. But before we go there, let's equip some armor. Yay, damage reduction three. It's Cummins and Cantina. Remember, we are in an area that is controlled. That means we cannot drop everything we see here. If we try, so if it's red, um, we'll get punished or attacked. And most likely killed. So as you can see, this is... Uh, look at the detail. Look at that love to, to, to detail. Showers where you can open. Wonderful. 
barrels. We have to go here, but before we go there, let's try if we can, can loot something out of this place, perhaps. There's some boxes there. Boxes is always good. Sometimes there's something in there for us to take. Yay! It's coins! We can use coins. Nothing here. We'll trade everything for our skills in the end, anyway. We don't have any way to open the ventilation shafts at that point. What you can do in most, there will be other underground bunkers where we stumble into and then you can crawl through the ventilation shafts. We'll close that door because there are people there. Then we'll go into stealth. And then we'll rob the place dry. Food! Cave hopper steak and eel sandwiches. Even more steak and sandwiches. And even more steak. I think I know what we can do with that. If we play our cards right, we might be able to get some extra um, experience out of this. Nothing here. Nothing there. You might wonder about the tutorial. I will read all the quests. As soon as we start questing, which will be in a second, I will read everything. No, pro no problem. But not the tutorial, because I have only one tongue in my life. So that is Hadrian Tanner. The man behind the desk is Hadrian Tanner, the counselor who admitted you into the Southgate station. Even during your first encounter with him, he struck you as an unusual looking individual. Setting aside his impressive statue, one finds it difficult not to notice his thick, brushy hair and beard envelop most of his head. That, in addition to his awkward glasses covering his eyes, which you never notice him without, means that you can see very little of his face and his expression. His somewhat dirty scavenger outfit, which he wore earlier as well, clashes with the clean, finely furnished office, suggesting that Tenor probably does most of his work on the field. As soon as he finished typing, he rises his hand and moves to shake your hand, his big hand, tucked into dark brown gloves. Makes you seem like of a child in comparison, and you especially feel his large fingers be to be twice as thick as yours. His deep voice feels distant and calming when he addresses you. Congratulations one again, Calderon, and welcome to our small community. You've scored very well in your tests. No small feat that. I'm sure you'll turn out to be a valuable and respected citizen. But more importantly, I hope you find peace and kindship here, which so are so hard to come by in the chaos surrounding us. I'll try my best not to disappoint. It's good to hear. I hope the earthquake didn't disturb you as much as you were able to rest a bit from all the testing, for you to have much work to do today. Events are transpired that you require attention. Are you ready for some field work? Um, ready and able. What's up? There are multiple events I need you to take part in, but one thing at a time. First, you can have your weapon back. Look as if the armory should have it. And while you're there, you might want to drop by the shooting range. Since you'll be doing some field work today, it might be a bad idea, and not, uh, not a bad idea, to warm up in case things get ugly. Well, tell it to our fist, it's always ready. Speak to Gorski if he's there, he'll help you set up some practice sessions. However, it's entirely up to you. Understand. And what is this field work you mentioned? Oh, well, we don't need practice. If you say so, now recording your first mission. Down in the tunnels below our station, just north of the crossroad, Coven lies a series of abandoned outposts. These outposts were built by another station a long while ago for the purpose of scouting and defense. In time, they fell to decay. I want you to retake them so that they might once again serve the same purpose. However, in order to do so, you will need to activate the main power generator that is located inside of them. Harold from the engineering sector thinks he knows how to get the generator operational, so he should be your first stop after we're done here. As far as I'm aware, there are a total of five outposts plus the one with the generator. I don't think it's possible to activate them all, but try to activate them at least three. You might also want to talk to Jonas at the Crossroad Watch Post. It's down the tunnel just outside the station. You'll be passing through there anyway. He's one of our most experienced scavengers and he's probably seen more of South Under Rail than any of us here. He'll sure to have useful advice for you. How well is the task credited? <laughs> A post-apocalyptic but still we're um, after the money. It's 300 credits, additional 150 credits if you activate all of the stations. Furthermore, you can keep everything you find there. Okay, alright. 
Oh, and one more thing before you go. Pasqualar Station Chief Physician wanted to see you, so you could probably pop down his office in the medical sector when you have the time. Got it. Mission accepted, sir. Oh, we could go here, but I think we cannot steal anything because the people here are aware of what we're doing. That's the reason I closed the doors, because then they cannot see you. It sounds strange, but the, no, we're not. We're not taking anything. Everything is red here. Oh, the fridge. Oh, the fridge is as well. You met Arlene during your testing period. She's in charge of food and preparation. Ah, uh, we used to make fun of Tanner's stupidly high standards when admire, uh, admitting new people. Not the end of the world if we get some imperfect, we say. And here you are, bringing us earthquakes on day one. Very funny. I was only kidding. Don't take it too seriously. NSW, what do you need? Got any rumors? Rumor has it that quite a number of people sitting outside the United States Embassy in the junkyards. I get they were feeding them good. Okay. Yeah, no help here. These guys are not giving. We could try to steal them, but we are not lock pickers anyway, so that's not going to work. This thing is not active. There is a guy with a quest there, but that is extremely dangerous, I've been told. Let's go to the armory and get our weapons. Because it might be clever to deactivate um, the armor, because we might be able to swindle some extra cash out of these guys. This is all red. We cannot take anything here without being shot, which is a shame. A short man rises from behind his desk with a grenade case in his hands. The heavy case meets the top of the desk with a tud, rising your uh, eyebrows, which in turn makes the man's face turn into a smile. He removes his gloves and shakes your hand with a strong, perhaps too strong grip before addressing you. Don't bother, Calderon. I'm not going to play us up. No, anyway. Menso told me you are staying with us for a while. Guess so. Well, friend, make yourself at home. Can I have my weapon back? Of course. It was a um, 50 mil pistol and some ammo, I recall correctly. Here's one. He produces a pistol that is such bad condition people would pay to get rid of it. Uh, a pistol? I had a bloody shotgun. A shotgun? But we don't have any shotguns here. 5 mil? I came with a 44, man. No cereals. This is your pistol. Okay, well, we're not getting anything out of him anyway. Then those. Oh, this got to be Newton's gun. Huh, my bad. Anyway, here you go. He hands you your weapon. Okay, can I sell you that weapon? Are you giving me anything for that? And for the ammo, because we don't need the ammo. And for that, because I don't think... Everything that is grey, he will not buy. So, what is he giving us? 221. That is acceptable. But before we buy anything, let's see if he's got something that we want to buy. Steel gloves, for example. Do very good damage. So that is an idea. He's got cave hopper gloves. That does a lot less damage, but still interesting. Um, he's got a lot of boots that are theoretically... Um, Interesting for us. The question is, does he have a code breaker? A thing that can open doors. And I don't mean grenades. Grenades open doors maybe as well, but... Um, no. Mechanical repair kits. We're not interested. Let's trade that. I have an idea. Before we do anything stupid, and I'm fond of doing stupid things, we buy what we need, and that is our ability to do side damage. So let's go there, and if there's any money with the money uh, left to do bad stuff, or to buy stuff. So, well, getting psychic is nothing that costs you, but the skills, the um, psychic abilities, they cost money. Hello, Kelleran. First of all, let me congratulate you on your admittance to our little station. I'm sure you love it here. It's good that you came. I actually wanted to talk to you about some of the results with from all those tests we did earlier. What exactly? You see, the test results show that you have a certain amount of sonic potential. How much potential? I'm not exactly sure until Rams and DMA test, but it's there. Okay, let me just tell you a bit about the psionic potential first. It's relatively rare and have inheritable complex genetic trait that triggers development of certain other ways latent components in the brain. 
It allows a person to perform subtopsonic innovations, such as influencing the minds of others, as well as some not so simple ones, such as causing radical temperature changes and telekinetic manipulations. Okay. So how do I realize this potential? You must first disable your psonic inhibitor, that's your natural new neural structure in your brain that prevents you from accessing your psionic protection centers. We assume it was designed to prevent the infants from unwillingly harming themselves or those around them. Ever been hit by a baby rattle? There are always, uh, there are ways to do this by extended medication, but this can take years. We have more efficient methods nowadays. You mean draw, drill a hole in my skull? He reaches into his pockets and takes out a large red pill. Please say it's swallow. This pill will take care of the inhibitor right away, but there is a side effect that I'm obliged to men mention. The majority of users experience immediate and significant weakening of their immune system. And when I say the majority, I mean everyone. To put it bluntly, you will severely affect your health. Ah, who cares? Take the pill and swallow it. You force the large pill down for a while and nothing happens. I don't think it's working. Catherine, are you alright? Can you hear me? Kaboof. Way Good, you're awake. How are you feeling? Oh, my head hurts. What happened? Disabling the inhibitor seems to have caused a psionic surge, but you were right now. While you were out, I took the liberty of performing some DNA testing to determine the actual levels of your potential. Well, the inherent potential is there, but you have to train your mind hard before you can make any use of it. Although take these. He hands you a pair of strings filled with a blue liquid. These are Psi boosters that will help to increase your psionic recovery rate. Basically, they'll allow you to use more Psi abilities within a certain period of time that you normally could. They're fairly cheap, work fast and have no major side effects that are equally useful for beginners and experienced psionics alike. There isn't a reason not to have a couple of them when you're going out. Okay, can I have two? What do you mean by only two? They're quite sufficient if you get started. I've got a lot... Uh, um, what do I take? Well, since apparently I'm not all that gifted and will need a lot of training, it was sort of experience some extra motivation. Besides, dangerous work awaits me after I'm done here with you. Just use them wisely and you should be alright. You can simply purchase more, they're cheap, but not shut enough for me to giving them just as you like. Okay. How do I start learning abilities? You'll have to talk to those who already adapted and see if they will teach you. You have two very good specialists in our station. Question. Quinton is well versed in met metatermics, which is the area of personic development that deals with the interestingly rapid temperature chases and chemical reactions. He used to one of the Biocrop researchers working for the new applications of psionics. You'll find him agronomy level, okay. And Beeson, that is the guy we need for our martial arts expert. He can teach you psychokinetics, how you feel effectively use it in unarmed combat, if it's something you're interested in. He's usually in the gymnasium across the hall, but I think he's helping clearing the tunnels right now. You'll find him at the station. Through the control discipline is considered many to be nefarious. It's also the hardest to get really good at it. I'm not sure who can teach you about it. I heard rumors that Ezra, the chief of engineering, is actually a powerful mind controller. But I don't know if that's true. Most people, including me, know nothing about Ezra. And so might just be one of them are making this stuff up. Anyway, I got to back to work. If you have any more questions, you come and see me anytime. And we will. Okay, is there anything? There is a footlocker, but there is nothing here, nothing there. There is a doctor, but nothing here. We're not giving up. We're looting this place dry. Ah, oh, screw me. Okay, there's nothing here. This is all protected. If we try to steal anything from here, we'll be at, get attacked. We don't want to get attacked. This is the gym and a bodybuilder. But he's not really talking to us. Um, I think he's bartering as well. So let's see what he offers. Psi boosters. Oh, look at that. 
Health is increased by 30. Agility is increased by 2. No, you're out. Oh, but he's buying. He's buying. We could sell him the healing stuff, but I don't think that is wise because we need the healing stuff for ourselves. Um, not sure where this leads to, but let's find out. Ah, hacking. 90! Ooh, what is that? Okay, station platform. We need to learn our psychic stuff and what? Um, we can buy the rest. Everything here seems to be well protected, but the guy we're looking for is up this way. Oh, we gained 100 experience just for getting our weapon back. He should be here, and there he is. Bison. A lean, athletic man faces you and greets you with a friendly, resonant voice. Hello, friend. I don't believe we've met. My name is Bison. Well met, Bison. I'm Keldron. I love to chat more, but as you can see, I will a lot be uh, a bit too busy right now. Is there anything you need? Can you teach me psychic abilities? I can teach you psychokinetics if you're interested, but I'm afraid I will have to charge. What? Uh why do you have to charge me? I'm not a scavenger. I'm not a manufacturer. Teaching is how I get by. Okay. Um, what do we need? Force emission. But we cannot learn that because we are too weak. We only have 20, I think. Force emissions. Called C punching. Force emissions. Fist attacks. For 200 credits. Yeah, sadly we don't have that. We can learn Psychic Punch. As when you face, uh, focus your mind to create a kinetic ball, then launch it at your target. Impact is so strong that it will hit a living target. With it, you're likely to dazzle for a short while. It's 50 credits, and I think it's okay. Hooray! So we could not learn the other stuff, because we're not um, trained well enough. We cannot steal anything because that guy is there. We can close the door. Everything is locked. Great. And we have no lockpicking skill that is able to get anything here. Let's talk to Roman. Perhaps she know or he knows something. I'm in charge of this barricade. I wish I had time to chat, but I'm quite busy. Have you made any progress in clearing the tunnel? Not so far. We've digged deep enough to safely plant the explosive, otherwise we risk damaging the tunnels even more. How much damage does it do? I'm well, not sure. It might be that the tunnel just caved in a couple of places. I've sent parties to the tunnel site entrances to investigate. We'll know more when they return. Okay, so that means we're just too early. So we have to level up in order to real fist see fighting. But that is not a problem because that means we have actually some money to spare at this point. Because when we level up, we'll have some coin as well. A willowy woman removes her respirator as we approach to exhibit a small smile beneath. You remember talking to her the first time you came here, but for some reason her name eludes you at the moment. If she has mentioned it at all, her lights Sparano voice is quick to remind you, though. Hi, Karen. You remember me, Essie? Of course, Essie. How could I forget you? How is it going? I got some stomach problems since I woke up. I'll be better soon. As I... Oh, we're good. Well, you've been at my station, so I reckon it you can't be bad, right? Right? Do you need some help? Directions? To be a bit more specific. Yes, I would hope you could... No, well, we don't have to go anywhere, so we don't need help. And that guy is not talking to us. He's, she's just controlling the environment. There is nothing here. The shelves are protected. Okay. Um, cyber labs. I think that is where we find some stuff. Do cybernetics to get some implants. We're forbidden to go here. But before we do anything, let's let's find out about this place. Need. Okay, not talking. Everything here is protected. Ezra. 
As he turns around to face you, you immediately notice there is something off with this man. His face is pale and hairless. He's missing one of his eyes, instead wires producing from his eye socket, traveling to the other side of his face and disappearing down the back of his neck. The other eye is almost colorless, with the pupils so contracted that you question whether he can see at all. He speaks with a calm and even voice. Hello, Calderon. I'm Ezra. I act as head network administrator in chief of the engineering sector. Um... I hear you are a powerful mind controller, is that true? Ezra remains silent and just stares at you. If this is true, I'd like to learn from you. Okay, he just keeps staring at you, stare back. At first nothing happens, then the two of you just standing, staring at each other. Your thoughts slowly start to drift away from what you're doing and you almost didn't notice you're losing control of your own body. The world around you blurs away until one... You can still see that Ezra one eye staring at you. It seems like he's not looking at your face, but through it into your mind. Okay. Um, give in and let him take over. You stand for a moment, held like a prisoner in your own body, and then the world disappears. I hope he doesn't take my money. He did take my money. You find yourself on a small isle in the middle of a lake with no recollection of how did you get there. Okay, let's hit that thing hard. Oh, it's immune to what we do. Great. Woo! I don't have the feeling that we can win this. Oh, now it's taking damage at least. Wait, we might be able to... Um, neutral overload... Okay, let's first of all, before we do anything stupid, um, let's get close to that thing and neutral overload it. Okay, I could kinetically punch it. It resists! Great! Now we hit it. Okay, get it it and beat it. Critical hit. I think we should do more psi stuff. I think it does more damage that way. Come on. Yeah, punch it. Victory! Killed if we if it did take us down. We get 75 experience! Hooray! Now that was worth it. And we learned a spell, uh, an ability without doing anything. Isn't that great? Let's go back to engineering and talk to the guy. Well, at least, at least his level, uh, his training was free, where the other one did cost us, so I'm not complaining. I'm constantly complaining, I know. Okay. Um, what did you to me? Only what you wanted. Consider it your first lesson free of charge. Okay, what do you offer to sell? EMP mines. Um, that is... Um, you can use this to hack. I really want this. Okay, and I think we'll need a battery for that. Not much, though. Ooh, look at that. Psionic skills increased. Headgear. Dodge decreased. No, I don't want to decrease my dodge. Actually, I want to increase it, if possible. Okay, what is the price for one of those? 20. Okay, that's a good price. But we'll need some... Um, Lysium cells. Okay, maybe not that many. Split. How is it now? Oh boy! 
Ah, crap me, but okay, I'm 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 going to pay. Hate to do this, but let's trade. Okay. Everyone is protected here, so we cannot break in and steal anything without getting noticed and killed and all that. And our hacking skill is far too low to do anything useful here. But I think we can get other stuff. Well, they're turning their backs on us. These are engineers. Let's talk to Harold. Howdy! You must be the new guy. Name is Harold. I'm in charge of this little workshop here. Nice to meet you. I'm Kelderon. Uh, so are you looking for something specific or just looking around? Tenna tells me you have a way to restore power to the outpost in the north. He nods. Right. I remember taking a look at the power generator while we were back. I couldn't do anything about it back then, but because I didn't have this. He rummages through the boxes that are on the table before producing something resembling an energy core. There it is, a flux controller. Sounds like uh, Back to the Future, but I think that was a flux something else. If you insert it into a slot in the front of the power generator, you will, should get it running again. After that, you ought to be able to reactivate all the outputs. I'm afraid you will f have to do that manually, though you see, each of them has a switch that cuts off the power in case of a hazard. Got it? Thanks, I'll give it a try. Uh, what do you trade? Come on, you have to trade stuff. Omni tool. Opens a ventilation staff shaft. Now that's cool. Uh, Plymatic hammers. I want uh, not all of them, but maybe five. Hmm? Five? Can I? Can I afford five? Oh boy! Give me ten. Excellent. Uh, how much is one of those? Just ah. Ha <laughs> ha! No way! Ah! No! No, 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 no. No, no, no. Oh, look at that. Maybe something... Oh, that is not protected. And there is uh, bottles in there. I'll take everything I can get my hands on. Because everything that is free is good for the taking. Okay. So, I think we'll end it here and next time we're going to buy weapons and stuff and go into battle. Until then, bye!